I grew up here, here in the Eastern Cape, amongst rolling hills and dusty streets, where small rural villages dot the countryside and the towns and cities are filled with reckless drivers and careless pedestrians. For as long as I can remember, I have always lived in a small town away from the hardships of village life where my grandmother still lives, away from the early morning call to go and plough the fields and the late afternoon shift of cooking outside with big black pots, where water is still boiled by the fireplace and where kings and chiefs rule the land. But even being from an urban town hasn't changed the fact that I am a woman born of the Tembu nation born of a people rich with history and tradition which dates back to a time before colonization. In the Eastern Cape, there are four original kingdoms, the Tembu Nation, the Pondo Nation, the Kosa Nation, and the Bondomese Nation. So I wanted to meet the king of the Tembu Nation, King Wilekaya Dalingyebo. Traditional leadership has always fascinated me, and with so much controversy in the media today, about the legitimacy of some royal kingdoms and the release of the results of the Gapo Commission, I decided to journey further into the Eastern Cape to meet a few traditional leaders and find out what the role of traditional leadership is in a democratic South Africa. I tried to get a hold of King Wilekaya Dalingye, but he was unavailable. So, in the meantime, I went to meet with the Regent Chief of Western Tembuland from the Matanzima Royal House. This would later turn out to be a big mistake. The Matanzima royal family is claiming that the Tembu nation is divided into two parts and that they have a legitimate kingdom in Western Tembu land. We were greeted by women from the village and the region chief, along with a number of chiefs from the Matanzima royal family who gave us a cordial welcome. Up until this point, I understood that the Matanzima royal family was made up of chiefs, but my misunderstanding was quickly pointed out. Kingdom. regional chief up. I asked him about the role of traditional leadership in South Africa today. The day after I spoke to the regent of Western Tembuland, I met with Chief Ngangom Hlaba, the chairperson of the Matanzima Royal House, who explained the recent problems experienced by the royal family. <laughs> Esele ezekile, ena bafaza babini, ngelishwa kwa bafaza nge na mduana. Londo gengogu ya kokelela indobana indlu e, kama tanzi mama ilangane, ikangele kwa ngokwe siko kuza utuwa nina. Kutege kwa ngoko, 
ukuba esishile uzwele ngosi kunhlangano wethu yokuqala savumelana into bana ubuyanda kwazinamba mayibe nguye obambayo ubukumkani basekhonda I was also introduced to the new king of Western Tembuland, King Siambonga, who would eventually take over the position from the regent king Gwaznamba. Kuye kwat kijana ngabati mfeni kuba kufishwe u kumkani u zilengos. Basha lagi abati. The Ndlapo Commission, which was set up to resolve all claims concerning kingships in South Africa, had decided that the Matanzi Maroa family did not have a claim to Western Tembuland. But I wanted to understand how this family could still continue to argue that their kingdom was legitimate. So I'd spoken to two historians to explain further. In about 1950, the king of the Tembus was Sabati Dalindebo, and he was a very, very strong ANC man at a time when all the other top chiefs were selling out to apartheid, more especially because of all the promises which they had been made about Dr. Favut, because Dr. Favut said uh, the homeland system is going to restore traditional leadership to the glory of which it was stripped by the British Empire. And Arkady Matanzima uh, was a man who believed and actually said that Dr. Favut had been sent by God to save the black people of South Africa from the British and we're going to give Transkai its independence. But K.D. Matanzima's senior chief, who was King Sabata, uh, didn't want to know about that. He says there's only one South Africa. So because of this, the, the old apartheid government started to boost K.D. Matanzima. And uh, the K.D. then said, well, if Sabata is a paramount chief, because they didn't use the title king in those days, then I also want to be a paramount chief. And the government said, but how can you be a paramount chief? And he said, no, because the original Matanzima, my great-grandfather, was the chief, in a, at, uh, was, was the king at a place called Hode, which is very close to Queenstown. So you have got the king of the Tembus, but you have also got the king of the Western Tembus, who are the Matanzimas. This of Tembuland is entire fiction. Matanzima, the real Matanzima, never claimed any kingship. And even Kaiser Matanzima grew up not claiming any kingship. It is only after his acceptance of Bandi authorities in defiance of the temple decision when now he had agreed now to support the apartheid agenda. Then, because now they wanted to install this Bandustan, they had found now somebody to use it was an instrument. Matanzima KD was used as an, an instrument to break the temple opposition, to divide the people, and also he had to be made some king. But the Matanzima family still believe that Western Tembuland is their nation to rule, and they are challenging the results of the Ntlapo Commission in court. Matanzima himself established himself as a king and was recognized by his people as their king and was recognized by chiefs of different tribes in this uh, area as their supreme leader. No matter what you call it, once you get a chief, that is a chief on top of other chiefs, 
then I don't know what you call that chief. But the fact of the matter is, when Matanzima established this territory, he established himself as a king leading a tribe, a Tembu tribe, emigrant Tembu land. After meeting with the Matanzimas, I was now more eager to speak to the legitimate king of the Tembu nation. But because I had already met with the Matanzima family, the king refused to see me. When we spoke on the phone, I reported to the king that you guys say, because I went to Ebu The king has lots of conflict. The king of Yabatim is divided into two Eastern Temple and Western Temple. This really confused me because the spokesperson of the Matanzima family had told me that there was no tension between the two families. The Dalinjabos had never complained about anything in relation to the territory that is ruled by Matanzima. Matanzima has never complained about the territory that is ruled by the Dalinjabos. There has never been a dispute between the two. There has never been even a slightest complaint. A slightest complaints between these two. Uh, it seems that a dispute has been created by the government and has been created by, by the Ntlapo Commission. Fortunately, the Kosa King was still happy to see me. So we continued on with our plans to meet King Ben Tsao of the Kalega royal family at a funeral service. <laughs> The Ndlapa Commission had in this case found that King Stao was the only legitimate king of the entire Kosa nation and that the Khakhabe royal family did not have any claims to their own nation. Fellas, <laughs> Apo kupeta kona ukosi uzwele ngaba kamkuzwa unyana kaule. Apa kusweleke umni na wawake ongo papa mamkuzwa. Ukupuma kwa bandu ka ute kwa wa ito lituna el kokeleyo. Kubona kalisa imbeko noku inika intronipo. Noku yazi noku suka nengambu ubukosi bakwa mkuzwa. The following day, I got the opportunity to sit down with King Ben Lus Tao at the Royal Palace in Ngadu Great Place to discuss the role of traditional leaders. Si funera no mung sere la aba bandus no kandu volok shuana bonga bazal bitu. Ebona apun shabawa la pukedi le si sikaku. Abandu balapa batinga ima lio kwazo uku putlisa. Go kwenza i project no kwenza nez nye ezit. Ebe singa nye disabete re ubanga aba ibi koni mali. E koyo kuinanzea kwe rechin nga nye yu putlisa. 
Londa wo ina woba do ina lo jurisdiction lo jurisdiction ya lo kumga. Ina ke inye fne aso kuba matolos tule mingwa ziko makosa government ala pepish. Isiti masi kumga ni nengo si simka ni nga ya lord. Kuba asina ando si tezi saunga pina mal. Ukulmende waluina waipumele na indo yo tatilis wali tatela kuye mlibe wali bala nga bandu. Abo na bandu bebe kini suwela msha. Having spoken to a few traditional leaders on their role within a democratic country, I decided to travel to a few villages to find out from people under the direct rule of kings and chiefs how effective traditional leadership is in the rural areas. Hi, and, and, and no, Masimu. I can't do that. I even got the opportunity to assist in a brick making process, although I doubt I did a good job. Nyo <laughs> 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 Jim <laughs> I also got to speak to an old man who, after living in the area for so long, was very knowledgeable about the subject. Mm. Since Traditionally, a king can have a number of wives and each wife has her own household. The great house and the right hand house are the two main houses in a royal family and are central to understanding the claims and disputes that the Ntlapo Commission tried to resolve. It is only the wife of the great house who bears the heir to the throne. The Ntlapo Commission used this understanding to decide that if the heir can only come from the great house or the support house if there is no male heir, then one nation cannot be divided into two kingdoms. The decision, the determination, was that in each of these cases, only the heir in the great house uh, was entitled to be a king. And the junior branch, the, 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 the right-hand branch, however important they were as traditional leaders, they were only senior traditional leaders they were not kings. I made my way to the Garden Court Holiday Inn in Tata to meet with Prince Zolile Burns Ngamashe, the spokesperson of the Khakhabe Royal House, which is based in Nlesha, just outside King Williamstown. The Khakhabe royalty are also challenging the findings of the Tlapo Commission in court because they too believe that the Khakhabe Kingdom is a legitimate nation separate from the Galega royal family. In Lapo, we are still interested 
uh, to know uh, the basis uh, for having arrived uh, to what we would regard as a very illogical conclusion. Amakakabe are a legitimate kingdom, um, even if uh, you are to look into uh, the uh, legal definitions, you know, of, of, of how a kingdom is defined. Uh, you will see that Amakakabe, they squarely fit into that definition. Um, 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 we are nothing uh, else other than uh, being a kingdom. And we are very proud. The Kosa people are one people, one nation, with one head. So that all this claim about two kings is not only mischievous, but the thing is nonsensical. The right hand is a limb in the same body. So you can't say now, Khakabe, who is the right arm of the Kosa nation? You, you, you claim that is a, a, an independent entity. The limb is part of this body. But from the start of this journey, I had wanted to meet with King Mulekaya Dalingyeb to find out what his role is as the leader of the Tembu nation the nation that my family is from. I travelled to Bumba in a great place to try once again to get in contact with the Tembu king, but I was very soon ushered out and forbidden to film inside. In a final attempt to get a hold of the king, we decided to make a phone call to the king's spokesperson, Pum Lamachai, but this time another member of the crew made the call. I was hoping that she would be more willing to speak to someone else. Um, Sis Pumla, I'm just finding out for one last time, is there no possible way of getting an interview with the king? It's out, the king said, no, I must tell you to cut him off. To cut him off, okay. Yeah, he's not going to be part of it. Okay. And he says kings are never interviewed. Kings are never interviewed? Yes. Why not? So, king, have you ever seen Queen Elizabeth being interviewed? He doesn't want to be interviewed. I was showing him the questions. He says, you guys are jokers. Yes. Those are the questions that would be asked in a typical, maybe, Pantustan situation, not in today's world. To leave the trans guy without speaking to the king of the Tembu nation, a man with a reputation for being difficult, was disappointing. But beyond this, I could not help wondering about what some of these traditional leaders had said about their influence in the rural areas. I also wondered about Pumla's statement that kings are not to be interviewed, since I had found other members of royal families more approachable. For them, clearly I had followed the correct protocol and the questions I had asked were acceptable. This journey has shown me just how complicated and politically entangled traditional leadership structures are since the demise of apartheid. However, its role of governance in rural areas cannot be denied. I just hope that the exclusion I experienced from the Tembu Kingdom will not come to mirror that of traditional leadership from our South African democracy.